Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series, Just Here for the Vibes, where I take a look at some of my favorite Japanese visual novel games that have no English translation, because I absolutely love the art, aesthetic, and music of them. And today we're taking a look at Dead of the Brain 2, as well as Marine Felt, two of the three games in the Nightmare Collection from Fairy Tale. Last year I did a video on the English translation of the original Dead of the Brain, and unfortunately the sequel has not been translated, but it is still amazing in its own right. And right off the top, as we leave our office, here there are just two corpses in this alley and one looks like it had its skull completely chewed through it is just such a strong visual to start the game and i love how this game is much darker in tone and artwork than the original dead of the brain this is more like return of the living dead with that 80s punk aesthetic versus dead of the brain having more of a george romero night of the living dead dawn of the dead feel but now that we've investigated the scene we have found a gun and that will come in handy even if we don't quite know when we're going to use it but as we come to the street level we're going to encounter this biker punk gang and they're going to be playing a large part in this game because what i can tell from the story and they are pushing some sort of drug and that drug may or may not be causing people to become mindless zombies we have a discussion with one of the bikers here and he will show up later but it seems like we were able to convince him not to bother us at this moment in time which is always a good thing but we're going to move a little bit further into the story and see what else is going on but i love this visual that city feels alive even if nothing is moving and as we move on to the next screen we find this abandoned factory with shattered glass in the door and as we move inside you're gonna find different areas to investigate now I will say that it can be a little complex sometimes you need to click the same spot more than once but we get what looks like a computer mouse with a bloody stump on the end of it assuming this has something to do with those robots but further into this warehouse we find these men about ready to inject a drug into this woman and then we get the first interactive fight sequence this game does have action sequences kind of like quick time events it gives you so much time to click on certain spots in the screen and you have to do it in the correct order Order. If you get it wrong, you die and you can continue to try again. So it definitely is trial and error. But I love the kind of hard boiled detective nature of this game. We beat that one guy and we find a matchbook for a bar Reese. Every single time we accomplish something, we return back to our offices. And I love that hard streaming light coming in through the window with that color blue because the PC98 could only display so many colors on screen at once and it was not much whatsoever. So if you start to notice, the artists have done an incredible job of be building a universe with that limitation and sometimes the limitations are actually what make good art you have to work within the confines but as we move inside of this punk bar we see one man and he's wearing a business suit clearly he doesn't fit in and the game does a really good job of kind of mixing these vibes up you have this gritty you know city at night where people are being murdered but then all of a sudden you have somebody in a suit that doesn't fit there but you know they're going to become important later but as we move further into the bar we find all of those punks that we have dealt with earlier and they have all those drugs out on the table not even trying to be sly about it it gives you the idea that this city is not what it seems it's dirty it's seedy and that underbelly is playing a role we get another action sequence and because we don't exactly know what's going to happen here we have to pick a target we pick this guy's head right here and we shoot him clean through the brain i don't know why this other guy does not shoot us immediately but the man in the business suit stops him clearly he has some clout in this universe because he looks directly over and in the next scene we are going back with him in his convertible to his office because he has something to show us but the tumbler of whiskey on the table the cigarette that light streaming through it just looks so incredible and even this what I think might be a Terminator head with a brain compartment in the back, bloody and severed. It's just such a strong vibe. And this is just the intro to the game. After this scene, we get the title card. We've barely even scratched the surface of Dead of the Brain 2. And I do hope this game does get an English translation, just like the original. But it doesn't all take place at night. There's also daytime investigative sequences. But the game's soundtrack is absolutely spectacular. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll be right back.
Just love the music to Dead of the Brain too, and the musicians at Fairy Tale did a great job crafting it. But moving on to the next game, Marine Phil. In 2050 AD, something is going to happen in this city. It's definitely futuristic and it kind of has a Blade Runner vibe, but that's not what's important. What's important is the inciting incident to this game because I think it is done very well. And I will let you watch the intro after the credits in full because the music is great as well. But there is a space probe floating somewhere above Earth. And you know generally things in space in horror movies are not good. There is some sort of man-made virus it seems on board called Marine Filt. Very weird name, but it's up there and that's what matters. But unfortunately it was up there, but at some point in time that space probe came crashing down to earth and landed outside a major city center. And if we know anything about horror movies or movies with viruses, you never want the virus to escape outside a major population because it spreads uncontrolled and things get bad. That's not just sci-fi horror movies, that's our real life at this point in time. I will say, this game is impossible to find. I've been searching for three years, it's the last game in the Nightmare Collection I need to buy to complete it, and I can't find it whatsoever. And this game goes the hardest of the Nightmare Collection as well. We get this little cutaway to this news story, and then suddenly it's going to skip to this person who has basically been completely disemboweled on the ground. We just don't know why this is happening yet. Marine Filt keeps a lot of that detail till later in the game, but this is one game in which you have multiple companions that you're going to work with throughout the game to experience different things. But I just love how this game is bright and also extremely violent at the same time. And now that we've been introduced to these characters, we get to meet them one by one and get bios about them. Because I'm sure if you could read the Japanese in front of you, the game would do the best job it could at making relationships with these people so you actually cared about them. Because not all of them are going to survive this entire game. I don't think that's a spoiler, it's not in English, but if you can read Japanese, you probably already played it. But I just again love the overall universe that Marine Filt takes place in, this slightly futuristic cityscape that might very well be what 2050 looks like. I mean, it's only 27 years away, and I'm assuming with some good luck, all of us will live to see it. But again, just this kind of cyberpunk aesthetic going on here is so much fun, and as that Marine Filt title comes in, it is incredible. But this is not in the cyberpunk video, this is body horror because even more so than Dead of the Brain and Dead of the Brain 2, the artists at Fairy Tales and the designers just wanted to go hard with that violence, which you will see shortly. But basically we're outside of this scientific center, and I don't know if we're being recruited or if we're investigating it, but one of the members comes outside and he's wearing a badge, and you can see one of our companions sneak up behind him. We do get to go into the building, and it's what's inside of the building that we're really not going to enjoy. But I am skipping around to kind of show you some of the highlights here, because once you get further in, you're going to find this lab. And again, the artist at Fairy Tale loved playing with that dithered light coming in through the window. Their sense of lighting is perfect. It's always what it should be on the screen, and I love that about it. And you get a little good luck English there. You actually get a tiny bit of English. But as we move further in, you're going to see that the cage says monkey, and there is a disemboweled cat still alive on the ground, which is interesting because they use the same aesthetic in the original Dead of the Brain, showing a cat with its insides completely out and still alive. But you have to wonder why Marina Felt keeps its victims alive. But further on into the game, you can see a full moon in the background and that light streaming through with that deep vibe again. And one of the members of our party is missing, so we need to go try and find him. And we end up in this back room, a storage room, and there is a corpse covered in cardboard boxes. But it's really what's underneath the cardboard boxes that is that pure body horror. Because when I say this is the most violent of the three Nightmare Collection games, I 100% mean it. We might not know what's going on because it's not in English, but the vibes are still strong. And as we uncover these boxes here, you're going to see exactly what's underneath it. And it is very gruesome. He has met a very untimely death. But that is Dead of the Brain 2 and Marine Felt, two of the three games in the Nightmare Collection from Fairy Tale. If this video does well, I'll do some more vibes videos. So leave me a comment down below and tell me what we want to see next. Do me a huge favor, hit like and subscribe and try to have a good day and not end up like this dude. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.